Hello and welcome to my unboxing of the first NVIDIA Tegra 4i powered smartphone on the market. That's the Vico Wax or Wico if you like to call them like that. As it's a French company, I'll stay with their pronunciation Vico. Um, it's, as I said, the first one with this new processor from the normally more from graphics cars and GPUs known producer NVIDIA. Um, their SOC, the um, Tegra 4i, uh, five core engine, so to say. So four cores plus the companion core, which is meant for uh, energy saving and low uh, performance tasks. Um, is uh, the, the basis for this one. It is kind of a mix in between the old Tegra 3. Uh, it has Cortex-A9 cores uh, and the uh, new Tegra 4. Um, it has, for example, 60 GPU cores uh, for the graphics acceleration, acceleration. So we can expect a rather good graphics performance, rather good gaming performance from this device. Um, and besides that, we have a more or less mid-class smartphone. It's a 4.7 inch display with HD resolution, so 720 by 1280 pixels. Um, it has an 8 megapixel camera, 5 megapixel selfie shooter, that's quite a high resolution. Um, it has only 4 gigabyte of storage. Um, and uh, one gigabyte of RAM, but the storage is expandable by micro SD cards, um, officially up to uh, 32 gigabyte. Um, so far, with all the other Wiko models where I have tested that, um, also 64 gigabyte X SDXC cards um, worked fine. Um, what else do I have to say? It's an IPS display, and I can already say it makes quite a good impression. Um, and it should be a rather light body, but I, th I would say before I go more into the details, let's go into the unboxing. So here we have the box. It's a similar design as the recent models, the Rainbow and the Fits from Wico or Wico. <laughs> um, and uh, in case you don't know the brand, they're normally known for their MediaTek-based dual-core phones. They have quite a big variety of smartphones in all different sizes and price classes, always at very competitive prices. And that's also one of the big plus points of this um, wax here the wax model uh, it is uh, available here in germany at only 199 euros uh, which is a really competitive price given that it has uh, this very new processor which is said to be quite powerful we will see that in my review and um, also 4g so lte support um, so let's let's start the unboxing. I've already broken the seals and I admit that I actually have unboxed this device before. It's um, I have already done the German unboxing video. Um, so you will find the battery also already inserted. Uh, this is actually, as I mentioned, I mentioned before, Wiko is usually building dual SIM smartphones. This is not a dual SIM smartphone, it's single SIM. Um, so unfortunately not the first LTE dual SIM smartphone that I would find on the market, uh, at least here in Germany. But well, anyway, here we have the device, um, quite simplistic or sleek design, uh, black front, the Vico uh, brand as usually here up in the left corner. Here we can uh, faintly see the sensors for proximity and uh, the brightness. That's the five megapixel front shooter. Um, down here we have a uh, metallic shiny uh, line, a design line here, which also goes into the sides of the phone. And uh, above these, uh, you can't see these right now, only when they're lit, there are three sensor buttons, uh, menu, home and back. Um, we will definitely see them later on. On the left-hand side, we have nothing. Um, on the right-hand side, we have the power button and the volume rocker uh, um, above that. On the top side, we have the micro SD port. Always a bit awkward to have that on the top, especially in the car, for example. Uh, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone and headset jack. On the top, uh, we have only a little hole for the microphone for telephony. And on the back side, um, we have a black uh, soft touch cover. Uh, there is also a white version available. Um, down here, we have the loudspeaker, Wico logo, um, the, the LED supporting the, um, the camera, the 8 megapixel camera, and a small microphone um, for uh, recording videos. 
yeah that's uh, so far about the exterior of the phone let's have a quick look what else we find in the box um, there is as usual a very thick but small um, manual with uh, which is uh, in something like eight different languages so not a lot of information only the most important things that bag contains the battery which is already in the phone um, a two milliampere a 2000 uh, milliampere um, battery i think that's 7.4 watt hours and uh, here of course the normal charger for a usb uh, one ampere or thousand milliamperes so that should provide a ch quick charging experience we have um, of course a usb cable which um, which which uh, com goes with the the charger for charging also but also can can connect us to uh, a pc for data exchange and things like that um, it's actually a quite um a quite cool one uh, with a flat cable design which doesn't mingle as much as the round ones in it i think it looks a little bit cooler than the other ones um, then we have a quite nice headset it's an in-ear in headset of a rather decent quality it's not as good as the one coming with the HTC one for example but it's better than most of the other headsets coming especially with uh, budget phones or other phones in the area of like around 200 euros like this one here then we have a small bag with four diff uh, other um, um, silicone buffers or whatever you call that for the in-ear headset so if you have a different ear uh, size um, you can adapt the earphones to that and this is a quite a nice uh, gesture of uh, Wiko. We have three different adapters for adapting nano SIM cards to micro SIM and micro SIM to mini SIM, the normal format to the bigger format, and I think also one for directly nano to mini SIM. Um, the phone actually accepts a micro SIM card, so most of these adapters are either for entering a nano SIM card here or if you break your old big sim card just for that phone here then you have a way back so to say that's the reasoning behind delivering that also with phones that use micro sim slots okay so far about the box content let's have a quick look at the phone itself um, it's already booted up first booting went rather fast First impressions of the phone are really, really nice. Um, the uh, animations uh, while scrolling through the different home screens or also, all, also through the app drawer is really nice. It's very smooth, absolutely no hiccups here to see. Um, of course, that can, can be expected by, um, by a four core uh, quad core CPU and also powerful GPU but anyway it's uh, the first impression is nice also the display has good quality and good viewing angles um, I actually like the the good black level of the of the display and also the vivid colors and also if you tilt the display I hope the reflections don't make that too hard to see you see some decrease of contrast or brightness but um, there's actually absolutely no change in, in colors, no use or things like that that happens with many other um, budget phone displays. Uh, so a quite decent quality of a display. It's not full HD so it's not top-notch. Um, also there are somewhat better displays regarding the viewing angles but it's uh, already very very good and it's um, only um, compared to the much pricier models uh, you can see some small deficiency sees here which i think will never never hurt in uh, in real life what hurts maybe a little bit more is that these uh, buttons down here are not very brightly lit right right now here outside you can hardly even see them uh, and even if you see them better if you have a less um, bright environment they are actually only lit after you press one of those buttons. So if you uh, use the phone, if you do something on the touch screen, they are not lit. Only if you go down here and use those buttons, the, the LED behind that is um, actually light. Uh, that's kind of a pity. It's, it actually happens with a lot of smartphones, also with, the, um, with the, most of the MediaTek-based ones. Let's have a quick look if there is a setting for that, because um no i don't see anything in 
their top phone in the Wyco uh, highway, the octa-core phone. They actually, uh, Vico actually introduced a setting for keeping them lit all the time while the display is lit, which I think is a much smarter setting. Anyway, only a small detail. I think we get very quickly used to where those three buttons down here are. Um, let's have a quick look at the apps which are installed. I have installed um, the uh, one game already, the Candy Crush Saga, which of course runs absolutely fluently, absolutely no, no stutters or things like that to see. Um, besides that, uh, there is virtually or almost no extra software pre-installed. We have both browsers, the, the normal Android browser and the Chrome browser. We have a flashlight in addition. Uh, and a file manager which is also becoming standard for Android devices these days and we have the Tegra zone of course which is uh, NVIDIA's way to to promote uh, NVIDIA optimized games and other apps uh, and also spread their news um, so it's a little bit more 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 or less advertising but of course also nice to browse their gaming section there and see if there's something interesting um, yeah, so far about the apps, um, I think on one hand I appreciate the fact that there is not a lot of bloatware on it, not a lot of useless apps that I will probably never use. If I want to have things like Facebook, Twitter or so, and so on, I can install them myself. I don't need the manufacturer to do that and waste uh, valuable system partition uh, space for that. Uh, on the other hand, I'm slightly disappointed that there is no game pre-installed. Sometimes, or on, on many other gaming uh, um, um, gaming oriented devices you have some nice games pre-installed that otherwise cost some money uh, like uh, Riptide uh, GP or things like that but uh, there is nothing like that on here that's kind of a pity but I'll see if I find some nice games uh, for testing the performance for you of course um, yeah so far about the unboxing I will try to create a review within a week more or less so let's say um, uh, yeah in the, in the first weekend of June um, you will hopefully also have the English review of that um, I'll see I promised to do an English uh, a German uh, interim review in a few days already with some first benchmarks results I'll see how how much interest it, uh, there is in the English unboxing and, and informations on the Wicker Wax um, if there is a lot uh, interest and a lot of hits to the video here. I'll probably also do that in English. Um, if you have questions about the phone, please feel free to ask me in the comments section either on YouTube or on Technofield.de. You'll find a link to the ar article that belongs to that video always below that the video in YouTube. Um, so uh, if you have specific questions about the phone, I'll try to cover them in the final review and I usually also answer virtually all the comments in my uh, to my videos uh, especially if there are questions in there which are not uh, too stupid well it, 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 please if you if you ask me how much memory that phone has please just look into the art article or look the video watch the video but um, besides that I normally answer all the questions or try to um, to my best so so far from that unboxing i can give you a very first impression from also using it i've used it for a few hours now um, used it for navigation already that worked well gps works well um, uh, wi-fi no problem um, so that's the very first impressions that i got and for everything else um, yeah you'll have to wait for the final review as i said in about a week so hope to see you then uh, if you don't want to miss that review or other videos from technofield.de please feel free to uh, bookmark me or um, follow me on youtube twitter google plus or the rss rss feed on my website and uh, i would also appreciate a thumbs up if you like that video so far from here klaus from technofield.de